Good morning guys, welcome to Ottawa. It's good to be back home, showing Kelly around, but also getting some practice in at the course I grew up at. But what I'm gonna do with today's episode is, I'm basically just gonna do the May Q&A and tackle the questions that you guys posted for the road trip Q&A that were specifically directed at me and about golf. And if you didn't see the Q&A vlog with Kelly and I when we drove up, go check it out. I'm really proud of it. It was an opportunity for you guys to meet my girlfriend, but also, see a little bit of this road trip, see a little bit of what goes on behind the scenes of a, of a mini tour player as he has to trek from Florida to Canada. But I'm out here practicing all day, so I'm going to tackle them throughout the practice, kind of the, the usual drill. So I'm gonna pull up some questions now. Okay, here's a question from a, a golf YouTuber. Any tips or like growth strategies? Honestly, you just gotta keep making videos. I started making videos last March, and I think I finally reached 100 subscribers in June, and then I didn't reach 1,000 subscribers until October, so almost over six months of making videos. You just have to be consistent, you have to be patient, you have to be hardworking, and you have to offer value. I think that's the only real tips I can give, um, and if you're in it to try to make money or try to get big or famous, people will tell. You just gotta be in it because you love making videos, you love editing, you love golf, you love you love everything that comes together and you just wanna share that love with, uh, with viewers. So the only tips are just hard work, patience, hard work and patience. All right, go-to snack on the course. What's my go-to snack on the course? Um, protein bars, pretty much, probably my, my go-to snack on the course. I, I snack, I bring trail mix, I bring all that, but my go-to would have to be some good protein bars. Um, the cheapest ones I can find wherever I am, wherever I'm playing a tournament. <laughs> okay, here's a good one and then I'm gonna keep practicing. How do you get through many hours of practice without getting physically and mentally drained? I think I've talked about this in past videos, but you gotta keep some variety in it, spice it up, not do the same thing every day over and over. Like today I came straight to the putting green to start, whereas tomorrow I might start on the range, then go to the short game, then do the putting, then go to the course. You just have to keep some variety in it and that'll keep you from getting mentally drained because you're keeping your mind fresh. And in terms of physically drained, just take the appropriate rest, take a breather, sit down for five minutes, have, a, have some water, have a snack, and then get back to it. A lot of people think it's just like, go, 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 go. Rest is really important. And a little five minutes here or there, it's not gonna take away from your practice. If anything, it's gonna help because you're gonna be a little bit more refreshed when you go back to practicing. And that's kind of like what I do with, with filming. This is a little five minute breather, back to work, motivated, fresh, ready to rock. So speaking of that, let's get back to work. to get a little windy out here so hopefully the audio isn't terrible done some work on the putting green on the range now I'm over on the short game area luckily here at Highlands we have two short holes like 60 yard holes I've talked all about this uh, last year but I'm gonna do a real real proper tour of Highlands throughout this summer hopefully I can get a good course vlog in for you we are right next door like literally across the street from the airport so even when I tried to fly the drone earlier it automatically lands. So I might struggle getting the drone up this summer at Highlands, but fingers crossed I can get it up and sneak it up at some points. Let's answer a few more questions. How do you pick the coach you work with? Historically, I've worked with the coach at my golf course, and then I've got a really good friend down in Toronto that uh, has helped me with my golf swing over the years. But then when it came to working with Dan last year, I made a decision that I needed to maybe put a lot more attention into my swing and take coach work a little bit more seriously so I knew Dan was in my area I did some research on him and I just asked around and the 
the reputation Dan had was really good. So we, um, we worked together first time and it worked really well. So we went from there. I would say picking a coach, you need to do your research, but it's also a little bit of trial and error. You have to give a coach a session or two and just see if you guys click, see if you can communicate well, see if you listen well, see if he, you can set goals together and all that stuff. Much like a caddy, much like a therapist, a sports psychologist, when it comes to adding someone onto your team, you need to trial and error it. And if you get lucky on the first go round, more power to you, but it might take a coach or two. And you ultimately just wanna make sure you're on the same page. You wanna make sure the coach isn't trying to take you too far from what's your natural motion and also not take you too far from some of the goals that you want or the timeline that you want like you have to come to a consensus you're you're a team you've got to work together so i think the relationship the communication that's probably the most important thing to look for when looking for a golf coach when working on technical stuff what iron do i use i typically use seven or eight iron i kind of rotate one day to the other because I just don't want to wear out my seven iron, wear out my eight iron. But when I'm doing my technical work, when I'm doing my slow motion golf swings, when I'm doing that kind of stuff, it's a seven or eight iron. And then I'll go throughout the bag and, and you know hit shots with all the clubs, but then pepper in some technical work with the three wood, technical work with the four iron, with the lob wedge. You just want to keep that variety in your practice but when it's like that block 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 work seven or eight iron what did i normally shoot in college or what was my handicap in college i was probably in the pluses when i was in college uh, my tournament schedule going to ottawa u was all the northeast states so we didn't have the best weather so you know rounds around par were really good in those conditions and i think i never won um, an ncaa tournament i won some oua and stuff like that and our national championships the canadian national championships right around par was, was good playing so i think my scoring average let's say in, in college would have been like anywhere between 73 uh, 73 74 but my obviously summertime tournaments and that kind of stuff that's when you had the opportunity to go a little bit lower because you had better conditions and maybe you're playing your home course or courses you've played a lot so i would get lower tournament scores in the summers and when I was college age, my handicap would have been in the round the, the plus two, plus three. I think I turned pro at a plus four handicap way back uh, in 2008. I think that's enough. Like I've answered the golf questions. I answered a couple golf questions back in the vlog from the road trip. And there's a handful of questions here about sponsorship, like financial sponsorship. So I've been wanting to do a video all about that. So I will do a video all about that in the coming week or two. But I'm gonna keep practicing. And then next week, we finally get into some tournament vlogs. I've got US Open qualifying on Monday. And then next Thursday, Friday, I've got the first two-day event on the Great Lakes Tour. So I will see you guys in those tournament vlogs next week. Subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and um, we'll see you in a couple days. Peace.